Hi, I've clicked on today's tropical tidbit for Sunday, September 1st, and here in the Atlantic we're keeping an eye on Invest 97L near the Lesser Antilles today, and this was the big wave we saw back here a couple of days ago that had next to no thunderstorms with it, largely dismissed by most of the global models, and uh, looked kind of like a non-factor, but we talked about how these large waves with robust low-level structure, when they come west, can encounter the warmer water in here and cause the trade winds to pile up and generate convection out of nowhere. And we've seen that happen today with 97L uh, developing lots of convection over a broad low pressure area. And we're actually seeing a lot of nice upper level outflow come out to the north and to the south today. And this was the other thing that looked unfavorable a couple of days ago was we had an elongated tut, which is just a fancy name for an upper trough here, bringing upper level westerlies uh, into the system and shearing its thunderstorms off to the east. Uh, but I remember we discussed briefly how uh, these really flat troughs in here when the if a wave can come in out of the southeast towards that and generate thunderstorms that heat will tend to split the tut pretty easily and if we look at the upper level winds we see that's happened today it's split right here we have an upper level low for Hispaniola and another one to the northeast and so now what you have is an upper level low backing away to the west away from the wave that's coming in from the east and when you do that uh, you take air out of the top of the system to the north and that is a favorable uh, setup for upper level divergence which can help keep the convection going and lower pressures overall so this is now turning into a favorable upper level pattern for the system overall during the next few days as upper level ridging develops overhead if we zoom in on this here uh, we can see that the general low level structure is very elongated from east to west here we have a lot of westerlies coming through Barbados meeting up with these strong trade winds coming out of the east and uh, this structure uh, although it's broad and elongated is uh, much more robust than the models anticipated and they have underestimated the strength of this disturbance in the atmosphere as it comes westward and so now this is something that we're going to have to watch as a potential candidate for development as it gets through the Caribbean here uh, because uh, even though it's big here and that means it's going to take its sweet time organizing. It means it's going to be around for a while, given how robust it is. And uh, now it's going to be coming west. And uh, don't expect it to explode over the next couple of days. It's uh, very broad, and these systems take a long time to consolidate. And uh, this honestly has a, a long way to go before actually becoming a tropical depression. But very gusty winds and heavy rains will continue in the Lesser Antilles for possibly another 48 hours, uh, given how slow the system is moving through and how, how large it is but it's also moving towards the Central Caribbean here. And this is an area where waves like this tend to struggle because the trade winds increase in speed from east to west, and that promotes sinking out ahead of the storm, which is not conducive for convection. And also the thin lane of water here means that dry air tends to get drawn off the continent and downslope off the mountains of the Dominican Republic here. So both of those things together tend to make waves struggle in here. And if they haven't developed prior to entering the Caribbean, they tend not to develop until they get out on the other side here and that's what we may see with this system it may not get named over the next couple of days but if it comes through the gauntlet and gets farther west into this the vicinity of Cuba and the Western Caribbean we may see it try to grab a name later on here and I think this will remain a significant entity that will have to be watched as it gets to the west and the problem right now is that the models, for lack of a better term, seem to be confused about what to do with the evolution of this system over the next few days. This is the European model. The orange colors here show low-level vorticity or spin, and you can see the elongated structure of the wave in 24 hours. By 72 hours, you can see the wave coming west south of the Dominican Republic. But notice we have a little area of energy that's trying to split away to the northeast towards uh, Puerto Rico here. And what this does is this piece ends up going northwest, and this piece piece continues westward. So what you end up with on day six is a split system with a piece over the Bahamas and a piece over Central America. Now, the reason this is worth noting is because uh, if we look at the satellite right now, we see a very nice low level ridge out ahead of the system in the Bahamas. And this is important because uh, when we talked in the last video about large waves similar to this one that actually ended up developing into hurricanes eventually, uh, they usually what they had in common was a, a nice nosing ridge in the low levels out ahead. And the reason this works is because it helps cap the energy, if you will, in the Caribbean and help it concentrate into a smaller area because it's harder for the energy to escape, escape to the north right into a ridge. And it's a little bit confusing that the European shows the ridge here and pressures are supposed to rise in the vicinity of the Bahamas over the next couple of days as a trough leaves and so if you have building pressures here why would a piece of energy split off to the northwest 
and uh, move away from the system. And this is something that the GFS and European both try to do and have done before. The GFS did it with 92L when uh, it took a piece to the north when the actual system went into the southern gulf. And this is a feedback issue that, believe it or not, the European can have as well from time to time, even though it's in general our best model. But if we look at the UK Met, um, the 850 millibar winds here, here's 24 hours, you can see the elongated wave axis, and then 48 hours out, notice it's still kind of elongated, but we don't have that piece of energy trying to escape into Puerto Rico like we do on the European, and you can see this nice low-level ridge extending right towards the Bahamas, and you see this really strong easterly flow north of the Caribbean, and if you're a tropical wave trying to develop in the Caribbean, this is what you want to see, because this means there's a strong pressure gradient here, and it's capping the energy to the south, not allowing it to escape northward like the European has it doing, and allows it to concentrate more in here. So what you end up with on the UK Met is uh, by day three a more concentrated system, not very strong, but you have all the energy bundled in one place, which means as this comes farther west out of the fast trade wind flow, it would have a better chance uh, once it got into this region to actually become a storm. But the European wants to split it into two pieces. Now this is our best model in general so I'm not saying this can't happen but I think it might make a little bit more sense with the robust low level ridge we have to the north right now that instead of two pieces we have uh, more like one system probably in between here uh, in the vicinity of Jamaica and Cuba in four to six days instead of uh, two separate pieces but we'll see how that works out and how this organizes over the next couple of days. And then here's the European 500 millibar pattern out to day five on the ensemble meaning we can see a trough coming to the northeast and it's in the process of leaving and again if you dig these troughs in the nor into the northeast you allow the tropics to bubble forth down here but if the trough then leaves to the northeast you build the pressures behind over the eastern United States and if we have an entity uh, coming into the northwestern Caribbean in the vicinity of Cuba here, you can start to increase convergence and lower pressures to the south of this high pressure behind the trough. And then, of course, when these troughs are coming down, you could potentially draw the system north into the Bahamas, Florida, or the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, but we can't really uh, get into the details on that yet. Uh, we have to see how this system behaves over the next couple of days, how strong it gets. The stronger it gets, the farther north it'll go. Um, but we'll have to see exactly uh, where it forms. If it does develop, a, a broad system like this can have low pressure form just about anywhere um, in that broad area. And so we'll have to see what it does in here before drawing conclusions about its future potentially up here. Uh, but uh, right now, all we're going to be doing is watching this uh, to see uh, if it develops, because this is now something to watch and something that really wasn't anticipated by the models uh, during the next, f the last few days. But the pattern favors, as we've talked about, uh, this remaining an entity that has to be watched once it gets farther west into an area that's even more favorable for this to eventually get going. So we'll see if it gets named, and uh, if it does, then we'll be able to talk about where it tries to go and how strong it might get. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.